By the end of this video, this is what our PCB layout will look like. You can find a link to download these project files in the video description. Make sure to hop into Altium Designer and follow along. Hello everyone and welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are gonna be looking at a flyback converter module in Altium Designer. This is a fun example project that was actually requested by a viewer. So I'm gonna run over how to work with these circuits, what they look like in a PCB layout, and some of the things you need to consider when designing a flyback converter. Make sure to hop into your copy of Altium Designer and follow along, and let's get started. So let's hop in and look at this flyback converter that I've created in Altium Designer. Let's take a look at the PCB. You can see here that this is what the final PCB looks like. We've got stuff on the bottom and on the top. I'll run over the layout here in just a little bit. But first, let's take a look at this circuit. This circuit for a flyback converter is designed to take in standard AC voltage at 60 hertz, and then it converts it over to a DC. We've got high voltage DC here, and then we have a transformer here that converts this over to a lower voltage. It then gets rectified and stabilized down to 3.3 volts. So we basically have a 3.3 volt module that can plug right into your wall outlet. So what I want to do now is break down each portion of this circuit and explain why we've done some of these uh, design choices. So first things first, you can see here on the input, we've got a couple of pads here where we can just solder in wires from a plug coming right out of the wall. So you could basically just use this type of plug that plugs right into the wall. And then here I've stripped down two of the wires coming out of this plug. We would really just need the hot wire and the neutral wire. Because there's no chassis in this system, I've left the chassis wire unstripped and you wouldn't be using it. If you did have a chassis and you wanted to have a safety ground, then you could use this wire and then hook that up to your system to ensure that you have a good safety ground using your chassis. But for the way this circuit is designed now, you just need these two wires. Next, let's take a look at the input stage of this uh, circuit. So here I have a fusible resistor. This fusible resistor is basically going to break and it will open the circuit if the current moving through this system is excessive. So this fusible resistor is a three watt fusible resistor. You can see right here in the description. So this fusible resistor will break whenever the power dissipation in this resistor is 3 watts. Next here we have a uh, metal oxide varistor and then we have a capacitor here and so this is just for additional circuit protection in case of surges. We then go to a bridge rectifier that gives us high voltage DC. We have a TVS diode right here. And then this stage with our switcher converts everything to a switching waveform through the primary side of this transformer. This is an open drain, and then it wraps around here to the neutral and then completes this circuit. Now here, if we zoom out, you can see that I've used a blanket directive to create a parameter set for this section of the system. That's because all of this stuff in this portion of the system is all high voltage. And then I'm gonna use that in order to set design rules just for the stuff in this portion of the system. So what we wanna do is use a creepage and clearance calculator to determine what the spacing between our traces needs to be on the internal and external layers. Take a look at the link in the description. It gives you a a link to a calculator that I've created on the Altium blog. You can use that to calculate the clearance that you need between traces in this board. So next, let's take a look at this transformer. You can see that the transformer is implemented here with different ground nets on the two sides of the system, and that is because we are ensuring isolation in this system. Now here at the transformer, you can see here that we have GND for our secondary side ground and then GND-P for our primary side ground. That's because this circuit is being used with isolation, and that's one of the reasons that you like to use a flyback converter. They can provide large step downs and provide isolation. So they're are typically used with AC inputs or high voltage DC input. Then we use an octocoupler here to complete the feedback loop. This feedback loop then provides the input here into the switcher, which is then used to regulate the voltage. This feedback loop is being biased with this regulator here, and then we have some additional circuitry to condition that regulator and ensure we get the right voltage drop across this LED in this optocoupler and then that is gonna bias this phototransistor on the primary side, and then that will complete this portion of the circuit. And then here on the output, we just have a, a simple terminal block. That way we can just screw in a couple of wires into the 3V3 output, and then we can take that power out to whatever we need to hook it up to. 
Now, the next thing I wanna do in this circuit is take a look at this transformer. This transformer is a custom transformer, and it's actually quite common in H-bridge converters or in flyback converters that you need to have a custom transformer. The reason you need to do that is because you need to engineer the primary side inductance in order to get the right peak voltage and current going into this drain in this switcher. So what's a simple way to build a custom transformer? Well, what you need to do is you need to use a core and a coil former. So here I have some core and coil former part numbers that you can use. These core and coil formers can be searched here on Octopart. And you'll see here that one of these cores comes right up. You can then buy these transformer cores and assemble it yourself or you can buy the core and the coil former, ship them off to an assembler, and some assemblers will offer transformer assembly services when they're building your board. Now, if we look at the specs that I have here on the transformer, you can see here that if you just add up the primary and the secondary windings, you'll get a 69 to four turns ratio. So you can use that with the primary inductance value or the required secondary inductance value to calculate between those different values. And that will then tell you what the primary peak current is and the primary voltage drop across that transformer is while it's switching. So to see how to use these values, take a look at the blog that's linked in the description. It goes over the design process for this transformer and you can replicate that for your own transformer when you're gonna build your own flyback converter. Now let's take a look at the PCB layout. So jumping in here, we have the PCB layout with the primary side here on the left. Here are our through holes that we can use to solder in our wires from our AC plug. And then here on the right side, you can see we have our terminal block. This is where we'll screw in wires and then take the output power to another device. One thing I wanna take a look at here is just how things are laid out in order to ensure that you have isolation. So here you can see T1 is part of the isolation barrier and then U9 right here on the bottom layer is the other part of the isolation barrier. So the important point to note here is that we can very clearly draw a straight line right between these two different sections. And that really shows us where our isolation is. So we have isolation across T1 right here, and then we have isolation across U9 right here. You can see here that we have the switching circuit right here. So this is our main switching component. This is a UCC 28881DR from Texas Instruments. So this is a line switcher. It allows for current control or voltage control. Right now it's in voltage mode, so it's gonna output a constant 3V3. And the trick to using this kind of switcher is to try and set it up in the layout and route it so that you have a really tight loop going through the primary coil on this transformer. Sometimes that can be kind of tough because the transformers can be much larger than these switching components. One thing that you could do if you had room is you could bring this maybe a little closer over in this region, but over here in this region is also just fine. The reason is that you can see here this loop that's made up to pin one and then pin four is gonna be reasonably tight for this type of circuit. Now, as far as the feedback loop is concerned, the feedback loop actually starts on the output side, not on the input side. So you don't have the same type of resistive voltage divider that you would have on a non-isolated buck converter or a non-isolated switching converter in general. This all exists on the output side, and that's what's used to bias this optocoupler and then couple that signal over to the primary side. What we wanna make sure you do in this type of layout is have those terminals of that optocoupler be reasonably close to this switcher. The last thing that I would do to improve this is I would just put some ground here on the top layer that just conceals all of this. The reason I wanna do that is because this is a switcher, it is drawing high current into it, and as it's drawing high current, it's gonna create strong magnetic fields. You wanna try and remove some of that noise or suppress some of that noise, and the easiest way to do that with these types of switchers is to just put ground on the other layer. That's gonna help block that noise. Now, if you are gonna use ground fill on the opposite layer as your switcher, you can do that. You just wanna make sure that when you draw in ground, you maintain this isolation across these two regions. So what you wouldn't want to do is draw, for example, the polygon starting here all the way over to this side of the board. You would instead wanna draw it over to here, clearly define your isolation area, and then just draw it down like this so that it covers the components you need it to cover. And then you can complete it like this. Then you can do the same thing on the other side. You can then start in one corner, draw it over like this, complete that polygon, and then fill everything in and pour it, and then make sure that you select the right settings in the polygon so that it pours over all same net objects. 
You'll then need to do another repour and then everything is good to go. Make sure you also assign the correct nets because remember, these are different nets. This is my secondary ground, which is just GND. And then this one is my primary ground, which is GND-P. So this is what that would look like if you were going to use ground pour on the top layer to provide shielding for the components on the bottom side. So in addition to fixing up some ground on my top layer, there are a couple of things that I can do to clean up this board before I output the fabrication files and then make it available online. So just as an example, I would want to put in something over here on the silk screen layer that very clearly tells me that this is my AC in. I would also want to add something here on the output that tells me this is 3.3 volts out at one amp. I'll add that in later. And if you've ever seen any of my other projects, you know that I usually put a company logo and the Altium logo, as well as a made up part number on the top layer. So aside from those points, I'm pretty happy with this flyback converter module, and I'm gonna finalize this and make everything available online for all of you to download for free. Okay, everybody, I decided to take this layout home with me and get it finished in the studio, and I have the finished layout here on screen. You can see it right here. So here in 3D, it looks pretty similar to what we saw before. Um, here on the 2D view, you can see that I have added in my usual logos and part number. I've also gone through and cleaned up all the silk screen, and then I've gone through and of course done the design rule check, make sure it passes everything. So what I like to do at the end here is to just point out a few things that you could do to possibly improve this layout. So one thing that you could do is you could put a safety capacitor across uh, the two sides of this board. So with this being an isolated power supply, sometimes it is typical to put a safety capacitor across the two ground regions. That way, high frequency noise in the secondary region has a path back to the primary side via that safety capacitor. Now, the way you would do this is you could just get a like an axial uh, safety capacitor and then put it across the two sides. You could DNP it when you do an order for this board. Then when you receive the board, you can of course mount it at your choosing and then you can experiment whether or not you get uh, more or less noise or solve any noise problems by placing that safety capacitor. The other thing that you might wanna do is extend this board a little bit and then put a common mode choke on the output of this 3V3 regulator. The reason you might want to do that is if you have any issues with conducted emissions coming off of the cable. The reason you might want to do that also is because we don't have any power factor correction on this primary side. We do have a switcher on this primary side, and it is typical to add in a power factor correction circuit when you have a switcher that is drawing in a lot of power. Now, of course, this particular circuit isn't drawing in a lot of power, so we don't really need power factor correction, um, but on much larger power supplies, we would want to apply that. So here, you could apply common mode choke. Now, if you want to get the design files for this project, just check out the link in the description. You can download these files for free and start using them in your own projects. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comment section. And of course, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.